husband when you make it home that night? No. Okay. I'm going to get into January 11th in just a moment. Um, prior to that, were there any physical encounters in 2018 that we did not speak about where you were left with any injuries that you recall? Yes. Can you describe that for the jury? What was the injury that you obtained? Um, I From your husband? Black eye. Okay. How did that occur? Um, I was in the master bedroom and I was doing some yoga. You can see we have a spacious bedroom. And um, he came in one day and he was standing in the doorway and he was making comments and comes over to me and he starts grabbing at me and, you know, and, you know, I'm pushing him away because he's starting to hurt me and he gets frustrated and angry and um, hits me with the back of his hand and hit me in the face when I was struggling. He was trying to take my pants off and I was struggling to get away from him. Um, his hand, he hit me, the back of his hand. Did you respond? I started crying and um, sort of de-escalated things. Was this at a time when he was living in the home or was this while he was he living, living elsewhere? There. He wasn't living there. Do you remember the month? I think it might have been like that spring or might have been in May. Do you know if anybody observed that black eye? I think, I think, a, yeah, I think a couple neighbors saw it and a friend. Okay. A friend. Did you ever explain how that injury occurred to anybody? No, not, no. And why not? Once again, it's not something I, something you sort of push under the rug. All right, so Ms. Redlick, I'm going to ask you about the events of January 11, 2019, okay? Morning. Is your husband at the house? Yes. So what's going on? Are you still in the loft area? Yes. Do you have any interaction with him that morning? Uh, yes, briefly. How was he acting towards you at that point? Um, well, he can't find me. He sees my car out front, and he's, my, he gets my son up and for school, and I can hear him yelling, where's your mother, where's your mother? And he's walking around the house looking for me, and he comes up to the loft. Did he ultimately find you in the loft? Yes. Okay, what's the interaction there? He just sees me. He's already you know, dressed and ready for work, pretty much, and he says, um, I'll be back. I'm not done with you. That was basically it. What do you take that to mean? Um, that he was still uh, mad and I'm not done with you. I'm not sure what that meant other than what, what had been occurring. Okay. During the morning, do you have any interactions with your husband? During? During the morning on January 11th, do you see him again? Um, no. Okay. What are you doing that morning? Just a brief summary. Um, before he, well, we let our cleaning ladies came in. I got Sawyer ready for school. Um, I know that Sawyer was upset. He cut his foot on some glass that was still left over from the night before. And so we, um, I had made some plans to just be out doing some errands and appointments while they cleaned the house. Okay. Um, and did you go do those? Yes. Any interactions with Michael while you're doing those errands? <coughs> yes. Text messages. So no nothing in person? No. What's the tone of the text messages between yourself and Michael that morning? Um, he's accusing me of having lunch with my boyfriend and, you know, am I enjoying myself? What am I doing? So what's the tone? Is it? Sarcastic. Some of what we saw the day before? Yes. When do you come back home approximately? Um, about one in that app. One, uh, Two o'clock that afternoon. When you come home, is anybody with you? My daughter. Had you picked her up from school? Yes. When you arrive home with your daughter, is anyone at the house? Yes. Who? The cleaning ladies and my husband. 
What happens when you get home? Walk in the front door. My husband's sitting on the, the white couch in the front room. And he says, you better have a good excuse or lie as to where you've been. What do you take that to be? What do I take that to be? Right. Um, a sarcastic, snide comment. How does that make you feel hearing this comment from him? That we're still not getting to a point where we can speak civilly. And was this comment with your daughter around or is she elsewhere at this point? She was there. What happens next? Um, I said I'm not going to get do this again today, especially with these the, the cleaning ladies here and Jade, so I left. Where did you go? Um, I had dropped my dog, uh, our dog Leo off at Co that morning to be groomed, and I was just kind of hanging out waiting for him to be done. And did you come back to the home at some point? Yes. When you arrive back at the home, what's the scene? Um, he's not there. He meaning Michael? Y yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, my husband's not there. Um, my daughter had texted me and asked me if she could go to her friend's house. I told her she could go. And she said, by the way, Dad's not home, so I got the dog and took, went home at that point. Okay. When you arrive home, is anybody there? And he's not there. Nobody's, um, nobody's there. Okay, so what are you doing? Um, then my son comes home. Okay, and what's the, the plan for the night for your son? He has a football game um, at 8 o'clock. And is your husband a coach on the team? He's one of them, yes. Okay. Um, so your son has arrived home. What are you doing at that point? Um, I'm starting to um, get some things ready for his or his uniform, looking for his uniform and things. And then I had been out all day, so I didn't hadn't showered, so I decided to take a shower at that point. Okay. When you're in the shower, does anything occur? Yes. My husband comes into the house and into the bathroom. What occurs at that point? Um, he pulls out his phone and he tells me, I don't know if he's actually doing it, that he's videotaping me, or recording me rather. And uh, he says, I'm gonna send this to you, let me get one last look at you, I'm gonna send this to your boyfriend. And he starts saying a lot of vulgar comments, threats. Do you remember what he's saying? Yes. And how did that affect you hearing what he had to say? Um, distressed. Um, Afraid, distressed, worried, nervous. What was he saying? Uh, he just started, he was saying vulgar things. Um, I hope he, you're, you know, I hope he Fs the, sh the shit out of you and then beat your face in and then I'm going to beat both your faces in. How about that? And things like that. He's going to send in the pictures and. So that's a comment that he made in the bathroom at that point? Yes. How do we continue from there? Um, I f he finally relents. Um, and I'm grabbing for towels, and you know, I'm finally relents and walks out of the bathroom, and I'm able to, you know, get out of the bathroom shower. Yeah. What do you do next? He starts following me around the house, harassing me. More of the same type comments. Um, well, not necessarily vulgar, but um, at that point, he was threatening to take the house and leave me penniless and send me back where he found me, um, take the kids, and I better not come to the football game, or he's gonna tell everybody what a horror and bitch I am, what I did. Do you leave? Or are you do what are you doing at the house? Um, I'm walking around. At that point, I had received a text from one of Sawyer's friend's moms, and so I was trying to pack my son a bag, get him ready for football, get him something to eat, um, and at one point, I just... So you were packing a bag for your son? Yeah. Okay, at that time, does anything happen? Um, yeah, in order to get away from the scene, I just ducked into my son's closet and stayed in there for like 10 minutes. Okay. What are you, why are you doing that? To avoid Michael. What's Michael doing that makes you need to avoid him there? He was following me around the house, and these are the, he was threatening me with the, saying these things. At some point, does Michael find you? Yes. How is the experience at that point? Um, he, I, I had my phone with me in the closet, and he saw that I had my phone, and he tries to take my phone from me. He does take my phone. 
Okay. And what happens at that point? Um, at that point, it's seven o'clock. They they got to get ready and um, to go to the game. And he um, I'm, he's yelling at my son to get his uniform on. In the meantime, he takes my phone and walks out the front door with it. What do you do? Do you follow him? Yes. And what happens at the front door? I follow him. I said, Mike, I need my phone. Give me my phone. You know, and he's refusing. And he says, no, I'll just take it with me and throw it, the, throw it in the lake if I feel like it. So um, I'm desperate for my phone. I run back into the house. and I. So when you run back into the house, what do you do at this point? I grab some eggs and I bring them out to the front and throw them at his car. Why? Because I want my phone. What happened next? Um, I got his attention, he opened the door, and he started coming toward me. And at that point, Sawyer walked out the door, was ready to go. Okay. When you say he started coming towards you, what's his demeanor at that point? Are you referencing your husband? Yes. What's his demeanor at that point? Upset. What is in your mind? What do you believe is about to happen? Um, he could hit me at that point. He was charging toward me. Um, I don't know what he was going to do. Was there any physical interaction right then? No. Um, so your son's outside? Yeah. Or is he prepared to leave? Yes. Is there anything else of note before your son and your um, husband go to the football game? No. Are you planning on going to the football game? I was debating. Of course, and I why? want to see my son play. Uh, well, I want to see my son play, but Michael telling me I shouldn't go um, concerned me. At some point, did you decide to go to the game? I did. What led to that decision? I received a text from him, from Michael, and he said, you can come to the game. How did that make you feel at that point, reading that text that said you can come? Um, it was just plain and simple, so I thought maybe it was a good sign. Did you believe that that was progress? Yes, I was hoping. You go to the game? I did. Does anything of note occur at the game? No. Do you have any altercations or interactions with Michael? No. When you leave the game, what happens next? Um, so uh, I just went home. Did your husband come home as well? Yes. Once you're both home, what's the tone? What's the atmosphere? Well, I was waiting to see, and when I was sitting in the breakfast nook area, and when he came in, he went into the kitchen and took out his bottle of vodka, poured a drink, standing at the counter, facing me, just staring at me. Okay. What are you doing? Staring at him. And he says, aren't you afraid to be home alone with me tonight without the kids? Can you repeat that? He says, aren't you afraid to be home alone with me without the kids? When you hear that comment, what goes into your mind? Here we go. And I said, uh, actually, as a matter of fact, yes. We're going to have to go back to our old arrangements then. By old arrangements, what do you mean? Living separately. How does he respond to that? Um, he's just staring at me. He's not really saying anything at that point. And then I make a comment that he looks really crazy and disturbing. Okay. Does anything happen after that? He says Sam Katie. What is that? Um, it's a character in a movie that we had watched like two weeks prior. What do you believe that to mean? Or do you, do you know the context that was being used to make that comment? I think so. Um, my daughter wants to and so we watched the movie with her and he's the antagonist in the movie and he's like a is a character named Sam Katie yes okay and he's just a, a crazed ex-con chasing two women okay after those comments is there anything else what what happens next I said okay whatever that's weird and I said I'm just gonna I'm hungry if you're not want we haven't eaten if you're not ready you don't want to get something to eat he's like just looking at me, he goes, where are you going to go? Are you going out? And I said, I'm going to go get something to eat. And he said, well, I'm going out too, see what kind of women I can pick up. Okay. 
Is there any more conversation or do you leave? Then I leave. Where do you go? McDonald. Yeah, I ordered something to go. While you're out on the road, do you, or when you leave, do you know if he has left or if he stayed there? I saw him leave. I thought he was going to follow me, but he didn't. Okay. Do you have any idea where he went or what he did? No clue. So you go to McDonald's, you get food? Yes. What do you do next? Um, I go home. When you get home, what do you do? Is he there? No. You arrive home. Is anyone home? I'm sorry, is anyone? No. Is any, okay, so you arrive home. You're the only person there. What do you do at that point? I sit down at the table, and I'm hoping that he'll, he's gone at that point, at least for a while, but I'm considering leaving myself. Um, Between McDonald's and going home, did you go anywhere else? Um, no. Do you remember if that was the only place you went? Um, I might have stopped at CVS. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah. For what reason? Um, I think I bought a bottle of wine. Did you take that home with you? Yes. So you get home. When you arrive home, what are you doing? I'm sitting at the table. Okay. Are you drinking? No, not at that point. I was starving. Are you eating? Yes. At any point, does your husband arrive? Yes. What happens when he arrives? Um, he immediately walks up to the table and he takes the phone, takes my phone, and walks away from me. Starts. To What's his demeanor when he comes in the house? It's kind of. I don't know. He seems sort of nonchalant, sarcastic. How long have you been home at that point when he arrives? Not long at all. Um, under five minutes. Okay. You had said earlier that your husband had been drinking before you had left? I saw him take a drink, yes. Do you know if he was drinking more? If I had to guess, it appeared to me. How so? Just red in the face. Um, I know what he looks like when he's drinking. Okay. So he comes over to you at the table? Yes. And he takes your phone? Yes. What, what does he do at that point? He just walks to the right of me, but then turns around pretty quickly and walks back toward me. And when he walks back towards you, what's he do? Grabs my sandwich, then walks to the left of me. Okay. What next? Um, he's standing kind of to the left front of me, and he um, he's talking about... Um, Caesar, and then he spits the food at me. You recall what he said about Caesar? Um, so did you make up your mind? Did you answer him back? Are you going to the Florida Cup? Come on, Mike, and that's when he spit the food at me. That's our breakfast at the kitchen table. This is the area in the home where we were sitting? Yes. When this conversation occurred? Yes. F6. Is this another view of the same location? Yes. How does it progress from there after you spit the sandwich? So then I just said, okay, I grabbed the, the bag and I said, you know what, I think I am going to go out with Caesar. And I start walking into the kitchen and um, I walk, going to walk through the kitchen and I'm turning to throw the bag of food onto the um, center island and that's when he, he comes up behind me and grabs me and I turn 
To the left. We'll get there in a second. When you make the comment, maybe I will go with Caesar. Is there a reaction from Michael? Just that he grabbed me. So you had walked into the kitchen? Yes. And where was he in relation to you? Behind me. So when he grabs you, what happens at that point? Um, I just shift and to the left and I trip up on my feet and I fall to the ground. And then I, hear, I feel something hit me in the back of the head. Okay. Yes. Yes. You said that he hits you in the back of the head. Where does that occur? Um, it would be in between these two spaces, okay. the counters. This is what we're looking at? Yes. So between these two? Yes. How are you positioned? Um, I was going to walk through the kitchen. I had thrown the bags up here. At this point, I'm here on my knees in between the center island and the kitchen sink area. So you're in this area between the islands and the counter? Yes. Okay, and you've gone down to your knees? Yes. Based on him hitting? Grabbing me, and I tripped up and went on my knees, then he hit me. What happens next? Um, I try and get up, and... Are you able to? He's right on top of me, so no, not all the way. How are you positioned then at that point? Um, just... I was on my knees, so as I was coming up, he grabbed me by the collar, and I felt our heads collide. And at that point, I grabbed the center island, and I reach up to pull myself up to face him this way. And um, that's when he takes his right hand, so when he grabs me here and slams me down onto the center island counter. So he's grabbed your hair? Grab me, yes. Was your hair up like it is today, or was it down at down. that point? So he's grabbed your hair and has slammed it onto the island here? Yes. Okay. What's going through your mind at this point? Well, I'm scared. I've, I'm thinking uh, I'm under attack. Um, what are you seeing from him? Are you able to see his face? Um, yes, at that point he's got severe angry look, grimace. Is that the same look that you've described previously? It is. Are you trying to talk to him? Is he talking to you? Um, I don't remember what he said. He was saying something. I know. I know he called me a bitch, and he had my. He had his hand. He was holding my head down on the counter. So I can't see him entirely. Using the bar in front of you, can you demonstrate how your head is positioned? Yeah, so uh, when I turned around this way, he grabbed me this way and pulled me down. So I'm pinned. Make sure you speak up. Let me get over here. All right. Can you please continue? Make sure the court reporter and the jury can hear you. He slams me down on the counter, and I'm pinned sort of this way, and he takes his hand, and he smacks in my head, and um, so I'm just pinned up against the counter like this, and he's straddling my body here and has me pinned, and so my arm's here, and he's got his hand on my head, and he's holding it down. Is your head actually touching the counter, or is it like you are right now? Um, I. Barely, yes, somewhat. He's pushing it as much as he can, but it's awkward. So is the side of your head making contact with the flat surface? Yes. Okay. What's he doing with his other hand? So um, he's standing above me here, this way, and he cocks his fist back. I can see him, and he's acting like he's going to punch me in the face. And instead he comes down and he grinds his fist into my face and then puts his hands over my both his hands over my hand and my nose, and he's pressing as hard as he can, smashing my nose into my face. 
What are you doing? Um, at that point, Physically, what are you doing? Um, I can't really do anything. He's got me pinned and I can't move, and I'm, I'm trying to wiggle out. Are you able to? No. Is there any conversation going on at this point? I can't speak, no. Are you able to breathe? No. I, I tried to take like three or four breaths and I couldn't even get a breath. So what do you do? What are you doing here? All I can do, so I'm, I've got a free arm here and um, the drawer in front of me is the only thing I can do. And I know that there's items in there. So how close is he to you at this point? Is he with his arms pressing down or is his body pressed up against you? Both. Can you explain just kind of how we are right there, how you were positioned in? Um, so yes, I guess I'm about, about here. And he's basically standing above me and he's holding, his, holding me down. Um, and like I said, he's kind of straddling me with his legs, so he's got me pinned there. Um, I don't know if that co comes out clearly enough. Are you trying to talk? Are you trying to say anything? Yes, I'm, yes. And are you able at all to do that? No. When you realize that you're not able to breathe, what's in your mind at that point? That he snapped and that he's probably going to kill me. Why do you believe that? Well, because I couldn't breathe, and I was starting to freak out at that point, and he wasn't stopping. Did anything make you believe that this time was different than the times before? Yes. How so? Why? Just, just the rage that he was in, and again, I felt like he was kind of past the point of no return, like he had built up this, and. That perhaps he wasn't going to stop. What was it that made you think he wasn't going to stop? The fact that he was holding me there that long, and just the prior two days, the press. Do you know how long you were held in that position? I don't really. Um, well, I haven't seen kind of fast, but you know, long enough that I couldn't breathe. So what do you do when you're trapped in that position, unable to breathe, with him over you? So I use my free arm to push open the drawer ahead of me. How so? Um, so how are you positioned at that point? Still pinned up against the, the island. And, um, and so you're leaning in with your left shoulder in this demonstration. Is it your left shoulder, your left, yes. the left side of your body that's up against the island? Yes. And are you on this near side that we see in the photograph, the side, the side of the sink? No, I'm on the stove top. Right. So what I'm asking is, are you on the near part of the photograph, or are you on the other side of the photograph on the other side of the island? The near side. Okay. So you're pressed up against, and you're reaching for your, with your hand. What do you find? The drawer on the end. Is this the top or the bottom drawer on the end? Top. So this small square drawer? Yes. What's in that drawer? Ladles, knives. What do you find in that drawer? Um, a knife. What's Michael doing at this point? Is he still holding you down? He's holding me down. Are you still trapped? Yes. You find the knife. You're able to open the drawer? Yes. You're able to grab the knife? I pull it out, yes. How does it continue from there? Um, pull the knife out, and I don't know if he saw it, but he released my head, so I'm able to move. Okay. Um, how, how do you position? So you said that he, you're able to move a little bit. What position do you go into? Slightly more to the left, turning toward him. Does he back away from you? No. Okay. How, said, go ahead. He says, what, are you going to stab me? And I take the knife and I position it and face it toward him. What does he do at that point? He immediately just goes for my chin and pushes me back and I, that's, and I stab him at that point. How are you positioned at the point of stabbing him? Basically on the back of the island um, and, and pinned by him. At that point, are you able to get out? After I stab him, yes. Prior to doing that, prior to stabbing him with the knife, are you able to remove yourself? Are you able to wiggle free? No. Are you 
able to get out without using a weapon? No, I was trying. Are you able to talk to him? No. What do you see in his demeanor after he is observed, after you believe he has observed you with the knife? Um, he's not phased. Um, and again, he's still, he's, still, he's still on top of me and proceeds to push my head back again. Did it seem like seeing the knife warded him off or scared him off away from you? No. Did it seem like it increased his agitation towards you? Um, I don't know if it increased it, but it didn't stop him. So he's pushing you down how at the point when you have the knife and you make contact with his body? Um, when I have the knife? Right. What I'm asking is when the knife is in your hands? Yeah. Which hand for you? My right hand at that point. When the knife is in your hand, how is he positioned? So what exactly is he doing to you at that point? Is, he, is this when his, head, his hand has pushed your head back? Yes. And your head is where? Um, it's like this up against the counter. I believe it was his right hand that he pushed my head back with. Are you trying to squirm him or fight out? Um, that just happened quickly. I was pinned or I couldn't really. At the time you have the knife and you stab him with it, what are you trying to do? What is your goal here in your mind? To get away from him. Why? If you don't do that, what is your belief that will happen? That he might smother me to death, whatever he was going to do to me. Did he have a weapon? No. You grab a knife or anything else? Did he know? So you stab him. Do you know where? Well, I guess let me ask this. Obviously, you've been in court to watch this trial. At the time, do you know where? Um, I thought it maybe caught him in the area that it did. Yeah. What do you do at that point? Um, I run. I run the opposite direction. I thought he was still coming after me. So what does he do when the knife goes into his body when you stab him. What is his reaction? He just, he backs away at that point um, and he sort of backs away this way and I, I ran the opposite direction. So which way does he go? You see in the photograph behind you, we see the stairs in the background. We see like the breakfast nook that you've described in the foreground. Yes. Which way does he go? Toward the stairs. Which way do you go? The opposite way. And where do you go at that point? What do you do? I ran to the master bathroom. How many times did you stab him? Once. After you stab him, do you take the knife with you or something else? No. What happens with the knife? I don't know. I, I guess it dropped. I don't know. You run away, you go to the bathroom? Yes. What do you do when you get to the bathroom? Um, I run into the bathroom and you know, the bathroom door is broke, so I run to the toilet closet and lock myself in there. I sat up against the toilet closet and um, was just hoping and praying he wasn't coming in there, but also thinking to myself, what am I going to do? This is crazy. I got to get out of here. Why do you go to the bathroom instead of running out the door, something else? I don't know. I guess I just always run there. Um, it was just instinct. I, didn't, I don't know that I was completely thinking at that point. I thought he was coming after me. And so do you hear him at some point? Yes. When is this? Is this right after you've gone into the bathroom? Yes. What do you hear? I hear him yelling. Um, I can't quite make out what he's saying. I heard my name. Um, but I don't know what he's saying. The bathroom door that we described earlier. Does he come through here? And this is this is at six. Does he come through the door? 
I never saw him come through at that point. And that door, the breakage that we have there, is that, that's from the day before? Yes. And that's something you had personally noticed yourself? You were present when that happened? Yes. Had there been any other times when you had had a situation like that where the door is breached? Many times. You ever had a situation where he's, is that the only situation where he's broken a door coming after you? No. How else did that happen and when? Um, at least once or twice in the bedroom door, definitely my, my office door and the front door. Front door at the house? Yes. Okay. When did that occur? Um, like the last time? Right. Um, it was November. Of what year? 2018. What had happened then? Um, it was like the second week he had been home and, uh, you want me to tell you how it happened? Right. Um, so, um, it was kind of our anniversary weekend or approaching that and, um, he had known that I had a plan on that weekend with some friends um, to go to New Smyrna to celebrate a birthday with a friend. And he was fine with it. Um, but when it came to that day, he wasn't fine with it. And was kind of whining about it and saying, you know, do you really have to go? Um, why don't you let me take you to dinner instead? This is our anniversary weekend. So I finally gave in and said, fine, canceled my plans and went to dinner with them. Okay, so how do we get to the part about the door being broken? We argued at dinner um, about this stuff we were both drinking and um we got home that night and it just ended up being a <coughs> bad night um there wasn't any physical that night but the next morning when we woke up um i had gone to starbucks and when i was coming home he was coming out the door and we talked about the situation and it escalated to an argument and i said i don't think we can do this it's not going to work um you're gonna have to leave and he's like angry about that and he says I can't leave, Danielle. I okay, can't afford so it. So how does, what happens at that point? Um, can't afford it, and so I get mad and I go inside and I grab his suits, um, some of his clothes, and I bring them out to the front stoop and I throw them on the front porch there. And he was getting in his car at that point and he sees it, he gets out, and he hates that because I've done it before. And he starts charging toward the door. What do you do? Um, he gets the door, and I, I, shut, I shut the door in his face and lock it really quick. So you get inside the front door during this incident? Yes. Is that the end of it? No, he starts kicking the door. He's really mad. And does it break? Yes. That's something you observe? Yes. So at the time, back on January 11th now, at the time when you go into the bathroom, what is your fear or what is your belief of where you stand at that point? When I'm in the bathroom? Right. After the stab that you've just described and you're running into the bathroom. Um, my belief is that I need to get out of the house. And I'm hoping and praying that he doesn't come bust down the door. When you stabbed him, did you, what was your, belief at the time of the wound that you had inflicted? Did you believe that you had killed him? Oh, no, not at all. Okay. Speak to that, please. Um, I just didn't think it was um, a fatal exchange. Um, I, like I said, I thought he was coming after me still. I thought it probably made him matter, if anything. I didn't even know that, I mean, I knew he'd probably be hurt, but um, I didn't think it was to ex an extent that he would be, you know, die from it or something. So you're in the room, in the bathroom, you're in the bathroom closet. Is this yes. the, the toilet closet? Yes. Okay. Does he come in there? I hear his voice get closer at one point. Um, I don't know if he came in. I, I felt like he did, but I couldn't be sure because I was in there. Did he come into the toilet closet? No. So is that door closed or open? Yeah, that door was closed and locked. Okay. 
Do you know, did you hear him banging on the door or anything in the bathroom? No. You said you could hear him, but you weren't able to understand what he's saying other no. than your name? Right. What's his tone at that point? Is it loud, soft, angry, something else? It was loud and just um, less loud after that. So at this point, when you're in the bathroom closet, you hear him loudly yelling your name from outside the bathroom. Do you believe that the situation is ongoing or is done? It's ongoing. Do you still at that point feel in fear? Yes. Yes. Do you have your phone with you at that point? No. Where's the phone? I don't know. And that's what I was exactly what I was wondering in the closet at that point. Do you have a landline? No. So when you're in the bathroom, you said a moment ago that it was less, it was loud and then less loud? Yes. How does that progress? What's going on while you're in the bathroom? Well, I'm just thinking about, okay, I got to get out of here. I got to, where's my phone at though? I got to find my phone I gotta, and I'm going to leave. Um, and I'm just hoping that he doesn't come to the door. So, or try and break into the door. And so, um, after a while, I don't hear anything. Are you still in the bathroom? Yes. <coughs> so are you... Have you left the bathroom at all and come back, or are you staying in there? I'm still in the bathroom. You're staying in there. Okay. So after a while, you don't hear anything. How long is this going? What's, what's running through your mind right then? Um, well, I'm wondering, did he leave, or is he waiting for me? So I'm just waiting it out, trying to figure out what's going on. Does he ever come back to the bathroom? Not that I know of. Did you ever hear him or see him come back to the bathroom? No. Do you know how long you're in there waiting? Um, not really. I'm at least 15 minutes. What are you doing in there? Are you just sitting in the closet? Is there anything else yeah, you're doing? I'm, I'm listening to him, and then when I don't hear anything, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. I'm trying to see if he, maybe he left. Um, so then I'm working up the nerve to come out of the bathroom at that point. After you had heard the initial noise with him outside the bathroom, did you hear him again? No. So you're sitting in the bathroom, in the closet. At some point, do you come out? Yes. Okay. What makes you come out when you do? I just didn't hear anything, so I worked up the nerve and popped my head out. You know how long it was before you'd heard, or between when you'd heard something and when you decided to come out? Um, like I said, it was at least 15 minutes, could have been longer, I don't know. When you come out of the bathroom, what do you see? I see blood on the floor. Where? At the, into the bedroom? Yeah, at the, at the bathroom door and leading into the bedroom. When you see that, what is your mindset when you see the blood on the ground? Well, I'm startled by it and, and... Why are you startled by what you see on the ground? Because it's blood and it was alarming and it was quite a bit. Did you understand the situation at that point? No, I wasn't fully processing anything at that point. So how would you describe your emotions as you see, as you open, as you come out of the bathroom, you see the blood on the ground and start to come into the bedroom? How would you describe your emotional state at that point? Um, I'm just upset and I'm startled and, you know, I'm kind of worried at that point. I see the blood. So what do you do? I follow the blood. Where does it lead? Into the living room. Do you go into the living room? Yes. And when you go in, what do you see? I see my husband sprawled out on the floor. Where? In the living room floor? Yes, in the living room floor. Is he moving at that point? No. What do you do when you see him on the ground? I yelled his name. I said, Mike, and he didn't answer. And I was thinking, well, I don't know, is he being dramatic or something? I didn't know what was going on. So 
I yell his name again, and he's not answering. So I get closer, and um, I'm still I'm saying his name, and he's not answering. So I go down on my knees, and I touch his face, and there's no response. And Did you see him move at all? No, not at all. Even if you touch him, is there any reaction? None. So what do you do when you touch his face and you don't see a reaction? Um, so I lean in closer and I'm, I put my ear and my hands on his chest to see if I can hear, hear or see if he's breathing. And it doesn't seem that that's the case. So what do you do next? Well, my heart dropped at that point and I start wondering what the heck and I'm looking around and I'm, I'm seeing the blood and, and I'm starting to glance around. I'm, looking, I'm glancing around for my phone and I don't know where my phone is, and um, I'm just looking at him, and I'm trying to figure it out. And um, at that point, I was thinking, oh my gosh, is, did he die? Did you see him moving at all at any point after you came out of the bathroom? No. When you are not getting any response and you start to believe, did he die, what do you do at that point? Well, at that point, um, I start freaking out, and so I don't. So I know I, I start looking for my phone. I do a quick walkthrough through the kitchen, and I don't see it. Um, I go back to him, and um, I lift up his shirt to see what's going on, and I see. So at this point, he still had a shirt on. Yes. Okay. So you lift up the shirt, and please continue. And I'm looking to see what's going on, and I, I see the wound. Where is it? Um, it's in his, like I guess, his shoulder. Is it still bleeding at that point? Yes. Um, I pushed on it and a lot of blood. What do you do then? You said you pushed on it. What are you trying to do? Um, I just was ass assessing it, looking at it, um, investigating it for a second. Um, and yeah, I see a lot of blood come out. And um, at, my thought was, did, that, did this kill him or did he have a heart attack? I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. You said you couldn't find your phone. Why? Do you know where well, it was? Well, he had taken it from me, so I didn't know where it was. You hadn't gotten it back after that had happened earlier in the evening? No, I had no clue where it was. This um, is what you described right before he, he took your phone and took your sandwich and then the attack? Right. So you can't find your phone. He's on the ground. What are you, what's in your mind and what are you doing right then after you've already described? Well, I start to think, okay, I've got to call... 911, I've got to find my phone. And so I go to look again and um, I do find my phone. It's on the couch, on the white couch, on the end, and it's kind of camouflaged on the black jacket on the couch. What do you do when you find it? I grab my phone and I just, in my mind, I'm calling 911. However, I'm looking at him and um, I just start thinking, you know, I start crying and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, well, can I help him? And I start. You try to help him? Yes. How so? Um, I start um, breathing into his mouth, like trying to resuscitate him. Um, and I'm doing that and I'm getting nothing. He... I don't know what I'm doing either. Do you hear anything or see anything, any movement, any reaction, any, anything at all from him? No, I don't. Other than my, what I hear myself doing, I don't hear anything. So what happens after that? Um, so at that point, I turned to my phone, and um, I did dial 911. And I think my, my thoughts were racing at that point. I don't know how coherent they were, and I guess I dialed 911 twice. And so it didn't connect. And um, at that point, I just went into like a full-blown shock. How so? What do you, what's in your mind when you try to call and it does not go through? I think it's just sinking in that he's dead. And um, I start to just kind of panic. And um, there's blood everywhere. And, um, you know, I went and grabbed some towels out of the, um, linen closet in the, in the master bath and I just grabbed a handful of them and I walked out toward him and I think some dropped on the way and um, 
I got down next to him again, and um, I think I was on my phone still nervously, and um, I just I think I just made a series of really bad decisions at that point. You called nine one one again that night. I did not. After you've grabbed the towels, what do you do? Um, I think I was just on my phone nervously. I started looking at uh, texts from my um, kids, texts from Caesar. Um, I guess I deleted Caesar's text. Um, I don't know. I think I was just starting to think about my kids at that point. And, Again, just a bad decision. Um, and I think I deleted his text too, which I don't know why, um, because I think those could actually. Objection, Your Honor. Um, non response. That objection is sustained, Your Honor. Yes, the objection is sustained. So, Ms. Redlick, I had asked you why you had deleted the text from Caesar. Yes. So, you said that at that point you believe you deleted the text from your husband? I think so. You think you deleted them or you think it was at that point? Yes, at that point, yes. Why did you do that? What was in your mind at that point when you did it? I don't know. I think I was thinking about my kids for the most part. What do you mean by thinking about your kids? Um, just what was happening here that, you know, this happened between us. And um, I just, I don't know what I was thinking. It was kind of irrational, all of it. In your mind, did the altercation that occurred in the kitchen match what you were seeing on the ground? No. I mean, it was a long knife, but no. When you have the phone, are you thinking about calling 911 at that point? Yes. After you had done the first time, but not a second time? Yes. But you never ultimately did until no. the next morning? Right. So after you've done that with the, with the deletions, Thinking about your kids, you're scared. What else do you do? Um, I think I was just looking around at that point. I was crying. Um, I was um, hugging him, um, and I just started um, wiping up some of the blood. Um, it just there was just a lot of blood, and I think it. I think it I think I went into the kitchen area and there was some blood there and um, I think I did grab the mop at that point and I started to clean up the kitchen area a little bit and, and I said what am I doing and I just stopped objection narrative so you're cleaning up at some point do you stop cleaning yes why because I but just didn't, I didn't want to keep messing with things. What was the point of cleaning up the blood? I don't know. I think I was just... I think I was just in shock and nervously doing things. 